Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you are shopping around for the best deal on processors then it may not be uncommon to find that some of the cheapest prices are available from foreign markets. I myself have bought a couple of processors from China in the past to save maybe 20 or 30 pounds but some of the most interesting and low cost listings are called engineering sample CPUs. These are pre-production processors of past generation CPUs that Intel loans to say OEM manufacturers so that they can be used in that company's product development before launch. Think of them as beta products. According to Intel themselves, these processors often include more features than the final retail versions for testing purposes, and the companies that borrow them are supposed to return the chips to Intel after testing, or just, well, not sell them on. Clearly that isn't always the case, and it isn't hard to find these floating around. Back in the days of the Pentium 4, pre-production engineering sample versions of that chip were particularly sought after because they had an unlocked multiplier, allowing for easier overclocking. You can still find these online, but even the most extreme Pentium 4 overclock isn't going to do much good these days. More modern and common ES versions of processors include those codenamed QHQG, a pre-release version of a Skylake i7, as well as the QH8G, a cheaper version that lacks integrated graphics and PCIe 3.0 support. This is the version that Brian at Tech ES City made an awesome video about a while back. Because the QHQG is a later version, it will work on a wider range of motherboards and BIOS variants, and has the onboard graphics enabled. It's often dubbed as the i7-6400T, which exists as an i5 in final retail form, and features 4 cores with 8 threads. The QHQG is likely an early i7-6700 test version, when you consider the 8MB of cache and 65W TDP. The 2.2GHz clock speed is significant lower though. With that said, it can be overclocked using BCLK on Z170 boards, with the right motherboard and BIOS version of course. Now it was actually a subscriber who sent me the information regarding these CPUs along with some benchmark figures to share. They also told me of some of the issues. At first they had a Gigabyte Z170 HD3P board running a custom BIOS but found that this was problematic, so switched to an ASRock Z170M Pro 4S board, again with a custom BIOS, to achieve a 3.8 gigahertz overclock. Sounds like an expensive combination, but when you consider what the i7-6700 on its own retails for, it's not too bad. So let's take a look at some figures that were sent to me of the QHQG CPU in action, paired with an EVGA GTX 1070. The gameplay here is for illustrative purposes of course, and the figures will be laid out in graph form. With Battlefield 1 at the ultra settings, the average in single player was 105 FPS, followed by a 75 FPS 1% low and 25.1% low, indicating some stutter. But with that average, the QHQG engineering sample CPU would have no problem in maintaining smooth frame rates in most games when paired with a card like this. In Wildlands, the average at very high is 67 FPS. I was told at Ultra there was some stuttering and freezing, which isn't surprising considering I experienced the same on my Ryzen 5, and the 1% and 0.1% lows were reported as 54 and 16 respectively, meaning that there were still some performance hiccups. The Witcher 3 ran at Ultra with 63 frames per second on average, but again according to the 1% low and 0.1% low of 43 and 14 respectively, this indicated some micro stuttering as it were, but these averages aren't to be sniffed at whatsoever. As for the Cinebench R15 score, that was reported as 796. So what you get here is a decent processor for the price, but let's move on to the butts. Technically, and well, legally, all engineering sample processors still belong to Intel and are never supposed to be sold. In fact, some engineers a while ago were even arrested for it, so it's probably not the best idea to go buying and selling these for a profit, for example. If you do choose to buy one for yourself, wherever they may be from, be aware that it will be a bit of a pain to set up as you have to get the motherboard and BIOS version right, and there's no guarantee as to how well your one will work. Although a Z170 board and QHQG CPU is cheaper combined than the i7-6700 on its own, don't forget that there are also plenty of used deals out there to be found on CPU and motherboard bundles that are guaranteed to function perfectly. 
and even offer similar performance. So there we have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed the story of these engineering sample CPUs that really aren't supposed to be out on the market but are anyway. I've seen a lot of people talking about these online and using them in their builds. So as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Thank you for 200,000 subscribers, which is just insane. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next video.